just play your game. You said yourself, if, if, if you know the makeup, you can't win. So just play your game. You've got this man, I believe in you. You can take out this whole team. You can, there's no one in this team that can beat. It can be everyone. We are clearly in a good position to win the whole team. Clearly. Why? Because there are no teams that can definitely say they can beat us. There are no teams. Nobody in Europe could beat me. I could go there and like, go to different countries and beat every single one of them without losing a game. If it was just based upon my skill level, I will win every single major in Europe, and they know that too. The weakest team? Canada. The Canada team is a little... Canada! Canada! I think Canada is weak. Canada. <laughs> I, think we're, I think we're the weakest team, honestly. But, no, but, no, 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 we're the underrated team. So we're not the but we're underrated. Welcome back, everybody, to Cross Counter Live, which is where this is the home of where we talk about all things fighting game related. I'm here with my special guest co-host, Alex Valle. And as we were talking about before we went to break, uh, we were talking about bar fights. And where we left, where did we leave off? Oh, Viscant and Flow. Okay, so after Viscant and Flow, then that's when things kind of got a little bit, uh, things took a turn for the unexpected. And Knives, uh, who's a local player, well, local is all relative, man, because he's from Lancaster, and for those that don't live, the, that aren't familiar with the SoCal geography, uh, Lancaster is about as far away from SoCal as you can be <laughs> while still being SoCal. And uh, he wanted to challenge Noel Brown uh, because Noel popped off so hard. What did you think about that? You know, uh, you ever watch those movies where you got that like cocky guy, the big douchebag, buff dude, and he's just watching a fight and he thinks, you know, I, I can do better, right? Mm -hmm. I can do better. So he's like, and he challenges him. You know, th that's how I felt like how it started. But, I mean, the friends were kind of edging him on and be like, hey, man, I think you can do it. Yeah. That's one of those instances. Mm -hmm. I mean, where else are you going to find this thing? You can't find this at a tournament. Right. You can't find this at, I mean, yeah, at some casual places, but while the rowdiness is going on, right. you know what I mean? While it, we it got just, the stage, the lights. Yeah, yeah. So I, I thought it was awesome. It just, I mean, it wasn't planned at all. I was like, what the, all right, some guy wants to jump in and, and see what's up. Yeah. And he took, and he took him to school. Yeah. He took I, him to school, man. I think the score was 5-1 or 5-2 or something yeah. like that. But it was not pretty. Yeah. And afterwards, uh, Noel was Noel got on the mic again. See, it's one thing to pop off when you you win, but it's another thing to pop off when you win and when you lose. Uh, and there you can see <laughs> <laughs> Noel. I think that was the exact moment when Noel told him, "Congratulations, you beat somebody famous." <laughs> Hit them where it hurts, man, because basically to Noel, Knives was uh, a nobody. Right. And, you know, it's funny. There's been chatter about having these guys play again uh, because Fnatic and Knives want to want to go up against uh, Jago and Noel. But there seems to be some hesitation on Noel's side. Um, I don't know. Like, he is not inclined to play him again. If it were me, though... If, let's say that I thought I was good at Marvel and I went on stage and I beat Dio Sex and I popped off on the mic. I'm like, yeah, I'm the best Marvel 3 player. And then this other dude challenges me and I'm like, yeah, I'm on, I'm on that high because I won. Right. And then I lose to that guy who I thought was a nobody. I would be like, you know what? I want to run it back. Because it wasn't just that they played for, for the money, because they did, but what ended up happening was that afterwards, it got voted match of the night because, to, uh, because of our partnership with Twitch TV, they offered to a $500 bonus for the match of the night, and everybody ended up voting that match of the night. So this dude comes out of nowhere, bodies me, and makes 500 bucks off of me. I'm going to run want to run it back for sure. Right. Would, would you want to run it back? <laughs> Man, if I'm not knocked down and staying on the ground, I'm coming back. Right. You know what I mean? It's like you, you know, you're coming to our coast, you know, you said what you were going to do. And somebody comes out here, opens his mouth and, you know, takes a little of that shine away from you. You got to get it back. 
Yeah. You got to get it back. Yeah. You know what I mean? And and leave completely full. Right. You know, no hors d'oeuvres, you know, (laughs) eat, you know, eat it all up. Exactly. Appetizers, main course, and dessert. Yes, sir. But unfortunately, (laughs) not. Unfortunately for Noel, yeah, Knives walked away with that money. So I don't know. We'll see what happens with that. And then after that, we had Complexity Cross Counter's very own Filipino champ going up against Justin Wong. And Justin kind of took him by surprise by playing Iron Fist, who a lot of people didn't even know was in the game. I didn't know he was in the game. I never saw any of... Uh, I, yeah, there they are. I never saw anybody play Iron Fist before. But go ahead. Yeah. Oh, um, see, guys, Justin Wong, however you see him, how he is, his latest performance or whatnot... He's still Justin Wong. You give him a new character that he likes, he'll he'll make it look like a character, like a top tier character. Yeah. But maybe down the road, it'll probably be one of the worst characters. But you'll never know that because <laughs> right. he's driving that machine. Right. And I knew from the get go, like if he's having this much fun with a character, Filipino champ's not gonna have a chance. Right. He's not. He's not unless like he ha- unless champ has some new technology we haven't seen. Mm-hmm. But it, that wasn't the case. It was yeah. straight Marvel. But I'm pretty sure he didn't see any of that Iron Fist stuff coming out. Well, if you guys want to see some of that Iron Fist coming, we got a clip of that match. Let's take a look. Ported himself into it to, to die there. And now Justin up three to two. Three to two? Uh, I believe so. Okay. Justin already put in a lot of work here with yeah. Iron Fist. He's going to be able to kill Matt Gito. Oh, oh, wow. Look at that. Nicely done, Justin Wong with Iron Fist. A character he himself thinks is low tier. So once again, just, I mean, one thing you will say about character loyalty, you try harder with the characters that you like. Yeah. And this is evident right now with Justin Wong working on a perfect here. Oh man, guys, you're right. And if he were to X Factor here or something, let's see what he goes for. Oh, he trick. went for resets. He went for resets into X Factor. He's going to be able to close him out. No. Follow up. Yes. It's a perfect and four to two for Justin. Oh, man. <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> nicely done to Justin Wong for holding it down with a character that maybe people didn't know was in the game. No. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> And, uh, of course, after that, we had Complexity Cross Counters Combo Fiend going up against uh, Mad Cats and Mr. <laughs> I always say Mr. N. I think they get mad when I say that. But Mad Cats and Team Marn's Marn. And that match could have been... Uh, that may have been a very one-sided match. But, you know, props to Marn for, you know, giving it a shot. You know, because, like, lots of times... You know, you gotta play somebody, and you know, you know that you don't have the advantage going into it. But, you know, props to him for being willing to give it a shot. Yeah, and uh, on top of that, Marn. Uh, even though we have our differences and like how we think of, you know, who's better or whatnot, he's that player, and I put him on this level. He's completely unorthodox. That's actually yeah. kind of like my style in a way. And when you're playing against Combo Fiend, I used to play Combo Fiend in his like younger days. And um, you're putting up two aggressive players, one random, one just like a speeding bullet that won't stop. Mm -hmm. And I think that appeals to what the audience wants. They want to see, because they know, they can expect Marn got some crazy combos, crazy setups. Then you got Combo Fiend with just technology that is just mind-blowing. You know what I mean? Put that together, expect it as a good show. But as you can see, the speeding bullet couldn't be stopped. Couldn't be stopped. Couldn't be stopped. Marn (laughs) Marn had a shield of... Uh, he was behind a six-inch uh, glass window, but Peter just broke on through with that Spencer bionic arm. And then after that, uh, of course, we had the main event that everybody was looking forward to, of course, which was Finger Cramps, Jago versus our very own Mike Ross, who isn't here. Uh, he is on a plane, or maybe he's landed in China and uh, he and Peter, actually, he and Kamal Fien are over, headed to China for a big tournament that's going on over there. I don't think that we'll be able to see any footage because I'm pretty sure the Chinese great uh, firewall of uh, China um, is probably going to be keeping that footage locked in. So I don't know what's going to happen with that, but I guess we'll have to take their word for it. Hey, man, it could be uh, the next Karate Kid. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
So, um, that match was also a little one-sided. Unfortunately, uh, Mike Ross, you know, tried his best. You know, he was, you know, he was training all week, you know, playing with dudes like Flo and Kamo Fiend. And, you know, he did, he and Kamo Fiend did really well uh, last, at last weekend's Wednesday Night Fights. They won both games. They won Marvel and AE, but unfortunately, Mike didn't come through. And that was a heartbreaker. Um, but, well, it, you know, it's funny. When you're doing, like, a live event like that in the setting that we have set up, you know, the crowd is right there. We can hear the crowd. The crowd hears us. And the crowd was calling for justice, you know? Like, and see, that shot right there was definitely not when Mike was playing. That shot was almost certainly <laughs> when Knives was beating Noel or when uh, Clockwork had that amazing comeback or when Justin had that perfect. Um, that was probably not when Mike was playing. But, um, you know, we want to give the people what, we want, what they want. And at that point in time, what the people wanted was Combo Fiend versus Jago to bring some justice get a little vengeance for not just for Mike, not just for Cross Counter, but for all of the West Coast. And Jago just didn't want to do it. I there was a lot of debate, you know, as to what should happen, whether Jago should play Combo Fiend, whether he shouldn't play Combo Fiend, but ultimately, I guess, you know, we kind of decided to leave it up to the crowd. You know, if you guys were watching on the stream, you saw me and, and Jago and Mike and Combo Fiend and Champ and all these dudes trying to decide what to do because everybody wanted another match. And Jago just, you know, obviously, like, he didn't come out here to play Combo Fiend because I don't think he would have come out here to play Combo Fiend. <laughs> Had that been the case, you know, I mean, Combo Fiend is just on another level, and I don't think Jago was prepared for it. I mean, what what was your take on that? I mean, did you think that they should have played? Um, you know, I hear that they've played before. Yeah. You know, and one of the things and it was about, not pretty yeah well, one, of, one of the things uh, as a top, as a top player or you know somebody that's expected to place high you got to do your research and um and if sometimes you can spoil that by playing your competition ahead of time and they've probably already you know you probably got beat down well that was supposed to be a really good match down the road but in this predicament they played i heard combo, combo fiend just annihilated them and that just pretty much said, hey, let's just save it for later or, you know, I'm not ready yet. So which, which path is he going to choose to tell us? Right. Yes. Uh, and the path that he cho chose to tell us was I'm not ready yet. Because, I mean, when everybody's asking for every, all, the entire crowd was asking for it. And I'm sure the stream monsters were asking for it as well. So me, I feel like my responsibility is to at least try to make that happen because that was what people wanted to see. So although I do understand that he didn't want to play him because he didn't train to play him, I do remember an episode of Why We Hate You where he called out both Mike and Peter. So in my mind, it's like, hey, all right, whatever. You want to call it Mike? Mike doesn't play this game. Whatever. You beat Mike? Okay, good for you. Guy doesn't even play this game. But if you want to be a... a a ducking artist, a duck artist, <laughs> and dodge combo fiend, who you also called out, then I have to question whether, I have to question his integrity as a player, you know, his, uh, his mojo, if you will, you know, like, how can you call somebody out and then not want to play him? Are you saying semi-pro fraudy, fraudlish? Yes, yes. <laughs> There's, it definitely smells, smells like fraudulence in here for sure. And I wish, you know, it's like I know that Jago is not here, but I can, I can smell the fraudulence just because I know he's still here in LA. Mm. Uh, so maybe that's something, you know, if you guys want to see later on down the road. I think it would be in everybody's best interest if you guys, you know, post it on our Facebook wall or hit us on Twitter or hit up uh, Finger Cramp and say, hey, 
We want Jago versus Combo Fiend because I think that's something that has to happen because I think Andre's been ducking him and I think Peter would demolish him because that's what he's been doing <laughs> every single time he plays. So I don't know, maybe that's something that, that happens later on down the road, but for now, <sighs> that was the way that it ended and it's really unfortunate. But we're gonna take a quick break and when we come back, we're gonna be talking with Alex Valle about all the new AE 2012 changes as well as what he's been up to as well as SoCal Regionals. So sit tight, we'll be right back. Cross counter. <laughs> 